be a battle of two of the NFC's best teams tonight. Carson Wentz and the Eagles traveling to Charlotte to take on Cam Newton and the Panthers. Both teams are 4-1. and one. Carolina blew me away last week. The quarterback's a big part of their success. Wentz playing solid week one. You know his story. Cam, last two weeks, underneath patterns, high completion rate. It's kind of been the Cam we've been waiting for for about a year. Whitlock, who's more likely to keep up this high level of play, Cam or Wentz? Uh, tonight, Cam Newton. Cam Newton is motivated and focused, and football's the only thing that can save him. And I love this Cam Newton. Look at it, completing 68% of his passes. I know. That's incredible for Cam Newton. Uh, and so I expect Cam Newton tonight to stay hot. I, I, I'm not 100% sold on the Philadelphia Eagles and Carson Wentz. And then I'll add this, not as confidently. I think Cam's, when the season's over, is going to have a better season than Carson Wentz. I'm not saying that as confidently as I am about tonight. I think he stays high. Both of these guys are talented. I just think Cam has been positioned in a way to where it brings out the beast. He, he, he's Superman again because he has to be. All right, but remember, Superman is also a mild-mannered reporter for most of the day. And then he takes <laughs> okay. The truth is, Wentz is IBM, Cam's a tech stock. So I, th I think you become what your personality is as a player. I think inconsistent, highly emotional people become inconsistent, highly emotional players. And I think guys that wake up in the morning and have the same breakfast and the same workout routine become consistent. They're consistent people. So I think Wentz feels more IBM. Hunts, fishes, betterly, upperly. Cam is a rock star, to your point. He is the mild manner reporter. He is Superman. So I think Cam will always be an inconsistent. Now, his ceiling is probably higher. Look, man, He's good I like, like the rock star analogy, but occasionally, like, Michael Jackson would throw out Thriller. You know, we thought he was dead. Then all of a sudden, he threw out Thriller. And <laughs> that, yep. that lasted a long time. We're about to see Thriller Cam, in my opinion. Uh, well, you mentioned motivated and hungry, but you left out healthy. I think that's a major part of it, too. Cam is getting healthy. So I expect Cam to continue doing what he's doing. Now, he may not necessarily throw for 300 yards. He doesn't do that back-to-back. -back. His career says that it, it's rare that that happens, that he has the 300-yard passing games. But the, read, the, the runs are there, the lead, the quarterback leads. He's able to, to now use his body once again. I expect that to happen. Wentz, I like him, like everything about him. But remember, he, this is year two. He's a young guy. He's playing without Lane Johnson. That's going to affect his offensive line. It's going, to, uh, it's going to affect his security in the pocket, knowing that that guy's not there. So all of those things factor in being on the road as well. So I expect Cam to have a better day. The thing I don't like about Carson Wentz is they asked him to throw the ball 40 to 50 times a game. He, he's a young quarterback. I mean, Doug Peterson is an offensive guy, quarterback. So that, that helps him. That, that helps him a lot. Also, Frank Wright was there. He was a quarterback. So he has the teaching there. But I'm not sold on their running game, you know, with LeGarrette Blunt. The Philadelphia Eagles are mostly a passing football team. I go to, I think of Cam Newton. Cam has some weapons now. He has Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey. He has Kevin Benjamin. Uh, his tight end is out, but I think they found another guy, Ed Dixon. So, you know, I think he has the weapons. And that's what it's all about, the weapons. And E.D., you said it best, man. He's getting healthy. you you got to be healthy. You know, when, when you're not healthy, you see a guy on the field, every, every player that's on the field is not healthy. Just because he's suited up doesn't mean he's healthy. He's, well, he looks like he's good. He's running around, but he's not healthy. And I think now you, you're starting to see a healthy Cam Newton. By the way, Carolina coaches told us this is what they were going to do. Remember in the offseason, yeah. they said, we got a, we got a fewer high-risk over-the-top throws, more completion. Well, the coach has said this is what we're going to do, and Cam, clearly coachable, this is what he's doing. I, I want to clarify a couple of their points to make to the viewers at home. Lane Johnson's their left tackle. Look at these stats, Carson Winston with and without Lane Johnson, the left tackle. <laughs> he's 2-8 and eight without it. And so Eric makes the point, Doug Peterson loves to throw the football, throws it too much. He's off that Ed, Andy Reid tree. He, he, he won't rely on a running game. So now you got a coach that loves to call pass plays, that won't have his left tackle, and his quarterback's play drops off without his left tackle. That's one of the reasons why I think we both love Carolina tonight. But again, I'll go back to who can sustain this over the long haul. I've seen Cam sustain MVP level play exactly. for an entire exactly. season. I've seen it before. And again, he's backed into a corner. He's not gonna win over people with his smile or personality. 
He's going to win over people by dominating on the football field. And when he knows that's his only salvation, Cam Newton's a beast. And, and I expect the beast to roar for the rest of the 